I'm Lieutenant A.B. Lance Mooney from Prince George, B.C., a Marine Systems Engineering Officer currently serving at the Damage Control School in Esquimalt. And I'm Lieutenant Navy Jarrett Hunt from Halifax, Nova Scotia. I'm a Marine Systems Engineering Officer currently serving as the Assistant Head of Department on HMCS Ville de Quebec. Marine Systems Engineering Officers lead teams of highly specialized technicians, mechanics, firefighters and electricians aboard Canadian naval ships and submarines. Anything that keeps the ship afloat and causes the ship to move through the water falls under, under the purview of the engineering officer and the personnel that work for him in the department. The ship is a small city at the sea, so everything that you can imagine you'd have in your hometown, in your, in your city, we have to bring with us to sea when we sail. So that's everything from electrical power generation and distribution. There's an electrical grid that I have to maintain. There's all the, the hotel services, like we like to call it in the Navy, everything from fresh, hot running water to ensuring that we have uh, air to actuate all the, the valves and all the systems throughout the ship, natural ventilation, HVAC, everything you can think of that you'd have in a city. Our ships are fighting ships, and engineering officers play a role in that too. Send raft team forward engine room to attack fire and forward engine room. Copy. As damage control officers, we're responsible for coordinating the control and repair of damage from fires, floods or explosions while maintaining the equipment so that our ship can continue to maneuver and fight as necessary. It's a huge area of responsibility. You'll be directly responsible to the commanding officer for the engineering department. Okay, I want to sit rep on that attack team. What's taking so long? Let's go. I'm divisionally responsible for over 55 personnel on the ship. I have the second largest department on the ship next to the combat department. And on a, on a ship of over 250 people, when we sail, and it's a large component of the ship's daily activities is under my, my purview as a leader. You've got to be technically minded, resourceful and inventive with the ability to solve problems in highly demanding conditions. You're not only the, the engineering officer per se on the ship, I'm also the environmental officer as well as I'm also the boarding party officer on the ship. So you're not just focused in on the, the technical aspects, which are a large part of your job, but you have a variety and a lot of other roles that, that fill your day up rather rapidly. When you first get on there, obviously you're 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 blown away. It's like I'm, I'm on a warship. This is very cool. Your first tours and stuff. I mean, your eyes are, are popping out your head, learning all these new things. Every once in a while, you just stop and think. I mean, you're, the bunk that you're sleeping in that, that night when you're on duty, there's missiles um, bolted to the deck just above your head. BK is running on 75 load. Long gone are the days of steam. We have uh, jet engines that we use to power our ships, both the destroyers and the frigates. And that's really what I studied, and really what I wanted to do with my life was to to work and maintain those, but do it in a dynamic environment that the Navy offers me where I get to travel around the world and see different cultures and things. After your basic officer training and your Naval Environmental training in BC, you'll start your first Naval Engineering Indoctrination course in Halifax. That lasts about 11 weeks, with seven of those weeks actually on board a warship. The next course is called Marine Systems Engineering Applications. It starts in Halifax for about two months and then continues in Portsmouth, England for another four months. That's where you begin to apply your knowledge of engineering to specific naval components. You're learning about all the onboard engineering systems and the technicians who operate them. When you're done in Portsmouth, you'll be ready for your first posting to a Canadian warship. You'll be assigned as a member of the ship's company sailing out of either Halifax or Esquimalt. You'll spend your next year as a junior officer in the engineering department. First year is your phase six engineering training. Um, typically, a ship will have one or two phase six engineering officers uh, training. Um, during that year, you're getting very vast uh, system knowledge, learning a bit about the administrative side of the job um, and having some, some very basic divisional responsibilities. After that, you might have a brief shore posting, or you could go directly onto another one year posting on board a ship, this time as assistant head of the engineering department. That's the job I have right now on board Ville de Quebec. We have an indication of fire in the forward engine room. It's an opportunity to focus more on the leadership and management parts of the job and learn how to run your own engineering department. Ready to go. Red leader, check the one. Two copy. Each one two. Each one. Two advancing on the fire. The best part about this job is just the diversity of it all. You're never in any one position too long that you'll get bored. If anything, it's, it's challenging because you're always learning something new, trying to find, uh, find the, the ways around or get good at, uh, at each of these new jobs. It's pretty phenomenal the, uh, the amount of responsibility that you're, you're entrusted with uh, at a really young age, especially in the Navy. I mean, I'm given responsibility for a billion dollar piece of federal property. In the worst case scenario, I'm responsible for the lives of 250 people on this ship, including my own. 
Beyond that, though, the job just opens up into any number of different directions, and, and there's certainly no shortage of challenges that, uh, that await me. Our most modern ships are sort of approaching their midlife refit point. Uh, a couple of our older ships are due for replacement, and there's projects ongoing to replace them. So there's no shortage of, of various engineering jobs, uh, project management jobs, and just filling the challenge of keeping the ships that we have going. I'd say the, uh, the best part of my job is really the, uh, the people that I work with. Uh, it takes a, a very unique mindset to, uh, to work in this environment. You're constantly challenging yourself to do more. You're constantly challenging yourself uh, with new experiences. Just being thrown into these various positions that has really challenged me, helped, helped me to become a better person in that. So uh, from, just from a personal growth standpoint, it's certainly been a good experience. I would say that my experiences have exceeded my expectations when it comes to the Navy. In the three or four years that I've been in Navy so far, I've visited over 20 countries around the world. I've spent time off the coast of Africa, delivering food to impoverished people in Somalia. I've, I've done all kinds of interesting experiences, both in a combat role and in a humanitarian role, and that's in just a short time. Mm -hmm.